How's it fam? Mike at Fitted Life and today is round two of the Z32 rear brake install plus the e-brake setup. Now I installed the rear subframe already and I also did some chassis trimming to fit the suspension arms because of the raised subframe. I will go over that in a little bit but today's priority is eventually getting all the Z32 components installed, which include the GK Tech modified e-brake cables and also the Part Shop Max drop knuckles. So lots to do, lots of work, but we'll get it done. All right, let's get going. So on the left rear side, you do need to trim the little frame lip. You go a little bit closer right there. And that clears the rear upper control arm for the rear left. So that's for this side. Let's head over to the other side. So on the rear right, it's just mirrored of the rear left trimming. So just position your rear upper control arm, get a good idea where it's at and then go ahead and notch it. And then lastly, on this side, let's look underneath the car. So the last modification only applies to the S1496 and up or the OBD2 setup. And you'll know that if you have this EVAP canister on the rear right, you need to relocate this vent line that goes from the canister back to the engine bay. Now, the way I did it was I went from this point went through, if I can move my rear coil over, and then I hug the riser, and then there's a little hole through the rear subframe. I'll get another shot of that. And then after exiting, let me see, I see right there, just trace where my finger is. That's the, it goes back to the hard line. So originally on the OEM setup, that hard line actually extends all the way out past this area. So that's why the, the Ruka would have hit that hard line, which has now been removed. And for demo, you can see, clears it pretty good. You don't have to worry about this line too much because at least for this Ruka, it doesn't pinch it at all. If any, it just a little tap. So to cut this, just use a little Dremel, a little cutting wheel, and then you should be good to go. I got this silicone tube. This was part of an engine kit, hose kit. So you can find that online and then new clamps just to seal the deal. So that's about it. Also, one more thing. If you do have some of your OEM clips, this was like an OEM clip that actually made it this hose and then with the the tinier vent hose, but I repurposed it. So now it's actually latching onto the bottom bolt of the rear subframe riser. So it works, right? All right, let's get back to the Z32 brakes. Max rear drop knuckles and then the hub. I purchased a new one because the old ones on my S14, the bearing was getting worn out. So might as well purchase these new ones and the Z32 rear hubs. Now, a little word of caution. These can get a little tricky, these setups. This right here, this little piece right here, which connects the e-brake assembly to the, the drop knuckle. Now, this come in two variations. You may see a more thinner version of this piece. And the only time you'll see that thinner uh, type of uh, attachment piece is if you have the Z32 rear knuckles with the lip and it comes out on the back side, like right here. And that's how you know that those are compatible. 
if you have the thicker version like what I have right here, then this rear Z32 hub is the correct one. So here is the e-brake plate for the Z32. Now expose. A few things you gotta do. Make sure that you lube with brake parts grease on these little contact patches. And it's slightly obvious. As you can see, they're kind of flattened down based on use. And it, basically it's every contact point that hits the shoes over there. Last but not least, because I will be running a dual rear caliper setup, I went ahead and trimmed the brake shield or the brake plate dust shield. And that'll allow me to mount the calipers on both sides and accommodate space on the new Part Shop Max drop knuckles. And one more thing, on the back side, you can see that little bolt right there. This is actually the original hole for it. But to work on the Part Shop Max knuckles, you'll have to drill another hole and then rotate this 180 degrees, this whole piece right here. If you rotate it, you can see there's a little uh, notch right there and that's where the bolt will clear instead. Also, one more thing. So on the Part Shop Max website, it'll tell you that to make the Z32 brake e-brake assembly compatible with their kit, you need to do a little bit of a swap around. And what that means is basically the rear left will go on the rear right and then the rear right will go on the rear left. However, what's gonna happen is you're gonna rotate it 180 degrees and then now this little piece right here, I think on the Z32, it's actually on the top side. I might be incorrect, but now this is gonna be on the bottom side. And then if you remember on the S14, the e-brake cable came from the bottom side. Now your e-brake cable is actually gonna come from the top side. So it's gonna hover up and then you're just gonna find your way through your rear subframe all the way back to that little T-fork, which I'll show you later. Uh, and that attaches to the main e-brake cable assembly. Okay. So here is the GK Tech S14 Z32 e-brake cable mod, or also the R33 cable mod. Now this is the original R33 cable. Let's just kind of run lengthwise and you'll see that the lengths are definitely different. On this furthest end, it's about this much different between the GK Tech modified cables versus the OEM one. So if you are going this route, I'm not exactly sure how you would approach it, but this is definitely a one-stop shop with the GK Tech equipment. I totally forgot about mentioning this brick grease contact points. You do want to grease up this area and then on the surrounding area right here. And then also where the expansion tube is to expand out the brake shoes. So just keep those in mind in addition to the contact points that I pointed out earlier. And let's get started.
So with the power of movie magic, the rear knuckles are installed. So let's do one more thing. Let's check for clearance and make sure that this whole assembly moves freely up and down. So to do that, remove the rear coilover or your rear suspension and then use a jack and then just slowly jack it up. As you can see, the Ruka is clearing all the way up. Yep, looks good to me. And there you go. It's pretty much all the way up. And then we can drop it all the way down slowly. And there you have it. Cool. Okay. So let me go finish this up and then I'm going to show you one more thing on the e-brake routing or the e-brake line routing. So let's get to it. So here is where the e-brake line originates on the brake assembly. And the way I routed it was through here under the traction arm. You see where my finger is at. And it coils around where the original location where the bracket is. So here is the e-brake cable goes through then it exits out on this side and then to make the e-brake cables work with my setup with the part shop max knuckles the e-brake cable will have the crisscross so it'll hit this clip and then it'll go crossover hit this clip and it'll fasten down to the OEM location for the S14 e-brake cables front so this is the front part of the e-brake cable. You do have the fastener nut right here that fastens this down. And then also you have the cable that hits the T, the e-brake cable T. Now to install this, if you flip it around, there's a little slot where the cable goes through and then allows the cylinder to sit flush in. And you wanna make sure that slot faces the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this on the other side and then we'll hit the rotors next. So here's a closer look at that cylinder. So once the brake rotor is installed, you'll go through the axis hole and then you'll be adjusting this up or down. So for me, going down will expand the brake shoes and then going up will contract them. And the goal is to get it really snug up to the inside diameter of the rotor and then back it off a little bit so the rotor moves freely. And Okay, so that is the axis hole right here. And then you're just gonna go little by little, go up or down, get it all the way expanded, test the fit. And then once you get hit the inside diameter, back off a bit, test for free rotation, and then you're good to go. And now for the grand finale, bam, the dual Z32 brake calipers. Yep, I had to wait for these due to, you know, what's going on in the world. But they finally arrived. So I'll be running these on the rear. All right, let's go mount these up. Without rework. <laughs> so here's some bonus content. Now I had to remove the rear coilover to access the bottom bolt for the rear caliper on this side and then here's the other bolt on the top and then you also have the two bolts on that side. Now keep in mind if you do have the rear Z32 the dual setup make sure that your valve for your brake line is on the top and you should have a pair of those for each side and i think you should be good to go and we are finished now i just got to put the rear coil over back in and we'll wrap it up
that is a wrap. So the rear S14 is finally complete. We are now ready to move forward onto the transmission and also the engine and the project's almost done. So I'm Mike at Fitted Life. Thank you all for watching and remember to design your life through your passion and I'll see you on the next episode of Fitted Life. See ya.